This is the Steam Deck. It's got a custom four core CPU with eight RDNA2 compute units clocked at up to 1.6 gigahertz. And this little guy is the Ryzen 9 7940HS. It's an eight core CPU with 12 RDNA3 compute units clocked at up to 2.8 gigahertz. It's currently the most powerful APU from AMD. And in this video, we're gonna install SteamOS on it to see what it can do. Let's start with a quick unboxing. This guy comes in a bright orange box and we've got the usual stuff like the PC itself, a charging brick, an HDMI cable, and a mounting bracket. The mini PC has a protective film that we can remove and once we do that, we can get a closer look at this thing. I'm digging the redesigned shell on this. It looks and feels a lot better than the older 300 series from this company. We also have better IO this time around. On the front, we have two USB 4.0 ports. You can use these for power delivery, but it's a little awkward plugging that into the front. The more important thing is that you can use these with an eGPU. The remaining port is for a microphone. On both sides, we have a mesh design with a lot of airflow, which is good because I plan to overclock this. The back has a lot more I.O. We have two HDMI 2.1 ports, 2.5G LAN, and four USB 3.2 ports. The only other thing that I would have liked to see here is a DP port or one of those USB 4 ports back here near the power jack. Before we jump into the first boot, we need to see what we're working with. The box says that this has a 512 gigabyte drive, but I think I can see a second one through the mesh. Airflow is pretty important on this, so they've added some strong rubber feet to give this more area for the bottom fan. This is pretty interesting. I do have two drives in this and they're cooled by this bottom fan with these thermal pads. The Wi-Fi card should be under one of these drives. Another thing that I'm seeing here is that we have a heat spreader on the DDR5 modules, and that's probably due to the heat that they can generate. After I take off one of those drives, we can now get to the Wi-Fi card, but the wire routing is a little strange because it goes under the other drive. This thing came with a pretty beefy Wi-Fi card. It's an Intel Killer AX1675X. But again, as I suspected, we do have two SSDs and unfortunately they are identical, which is a little more annoying when you don't know the slot name for either. I don't need two sticks of the same configuration for Windows, so I'm going to put SteamOS on one of them and I'll keep the other for Windows. I just need to find out which one of these is the boot drive first. Funny enough, this came with two eight gigabyte sticks, which is not even a configuration you can buy with this, but bare bones pricing starts at around $500. The bottom RAM stick has some thermal pads and a small heat sink attachment that extends out further. I also wanna point out that the thermal pads on the bottom fan are connected to a metal base plate. This is the second time that I've seen fans used for these components, but this appears to use better overall materials. Now let's take this all the way out so we can look at the main fan. With the main board out, we can see the big blower fan that they have. I'm not sure how well this is going to hold up at high TDP, but they say that it uses liquid metal, so we will see. So after booting up this computer, I found out that I have two Windows drives, and it's kind of strange because I thought these were in RAID configuration, but they don't seem to be. The sizes aren't exactly the same, which leads me to believe that one of them is a brand new drive that has not completed the initial boot setup. Whenever I try to boot into that drive, it just hangs. The company asked me to check if the BIOS was set to RAID by accident, and it wasn't. While I was there, I enabled the performance mode, which I think just increases the stock TDP limit. I'm gonna reformat that second drive now in slot two so I can install SteamOS. I don't wanna spend a lot of time in Windows, but I do wanna go over some benchmarks just to give you an idea of what you can expect from this hardware. Using the included Kingston SSD, I got around 4,000 megabytes per second read and around 2,000 megabytes per second write using the Crystal Disk benchmark. I also went ahead and did the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark and I got my highest single core score on a Phoenix APU with 1990. Our multi-core score is also very high at 11,718. When it comes to Vulkan, I got a score of 39,835, which is a bit lower than I would have expected since I have overclocked the GPU to 3.2 gigahertz at this point. Surprisingly, my OpenCL score was about the same, but this one was much higher on the 7840HS mini PC that I looked at recently. Since our CPU is so strong, I wanted to run the Cinebench benchmark to see what kind of performance we could get, and I'm kind of shocked to see that this can beat a 1950X Threadripper in this test. To be fair, it's several years old at this point, but that's a 16 core processor with a max TDP that is close to 200 watts. We are beating it with half the cores at less than half the TDP. Finally, we have TimeSpy. I got an overall score of 3132, which isn't that bad, but the GPU score is much lower than I would expect. We got 2786 with our GPU overclocked to 3.2 gigahertz. I plan to spend most of my time in Linux, but I did want to benchmark a few games. The first one is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I tested it at 1080p low settings with no FSR or any upscaling. On three, 
two, one. Our next game is Borderlands 3. We're at 1080p using the low preset and we're on DirectX 12. This is a game that I've shown off on my 7840HS and the performance is similar to this, but we do have a higher max TDP this time around. Our final game for this section of the video is Spider-Man Remastered. We're at 1080p with a low preset, and I made sure to record this same area later on the video when we're under Linux, so you'll be able to compare the two. But we're getting good performance here in the city during the day using these settings. We don't quite have 60 FPS, but we could get there if we turned on FSR. This tardiness is starting to become a pattern. Come on, Parker. You're better than this. <sighs> He's right. How did I lose track of time? Now to be able to get Steam OS on this, we're gonna need to use something called Chimera OS, and installing that is pretty simple. Normally, all you need to do is head over to the website and go to the download page. That will give you a small image that you'll flash to an external drive for installation. Since this is a new processor, I went over to their install media GitHub page and downloaded their pre-release build from the end of May. I flashed that to an SD card and went through the installation process. Just be aware that you need an internet connection to be able to finish the installation. After that is done, we're able to boot into Chimera OS. Let's press the guide button now so we can go down to the settings. In here you can see that we have a new build on this. It recognizes our processor, but the CPU frequency is a little off. More importantly, we do have GPU drivers in Linux. I'm seeing that the VRAM size is set to 2 gigabytes, but that shouldn't be an issue for this first video. Everything else in here works as it does on the Steam Deck. We have full access to Proton with some recent GE builds to pick from, but we can do that on a per game basis if we need to later on. I've also gone ahead and installed a few games to this SSD, but I have a lot more on a portable drive that should be automatically recognized when I insert it into the front Type-C port. As you can see, the games populate into this list, and these are the ones that I plan to test in this video. There's some overlap between this and the Windows section, so it'll be interesting to compare the two, even though it's not an apples to apples comparison. I also want to point out that you can use this as your desktop OS by switching over to the desktop mode. This is a bare bones Linux image that you can use as your desktop, but I'm more interested in the game mode since I already have Windows dual boot on this PC. Now we're going to look at some games, but there are two things that we need to look at first. The first is inside our right menu. TDP control doesn't exist at this point on this processor, but it will in the future. When it does, you'll have to use external tools to configure the TDP, and without it, you're going to be limited to whatever is set in the BIOS. This matters a lot more on a handheld than it does on a PC where we don't really need to care about battery life. Even though we are limited by the BIOS, we should be able to get at least 54 watts on this board using the performance option in the BIOS. Unfortunately, we won't be able to overclock the GPU at this time, so this isn't the best performance that you can expect to see from this processor under Linux. It's just the best that we can show off at this point in time. The next thing that's kind of annoying about this is that you're going to have to remember to come in here and change the resolution options because by default it'll be set to 720p. I've already gone ahead and done that to all of the games that I've installed, so it should not be an issue for us. With that out of the way, let's start looking at some gameplay performance. I have not used SteamOS or Chimera OS on a Ryzen 7000 processor yet, and I'm excited to see what it can do. Let's kick things off with a lighter game. This is Core Keeper, and we're at 1080p using medium settings. Now this game actually surprised me because it doesn't seem like it runs this well under Windows with this APU. I play this on the ROG Ally, and I've benchmarked this on the 7840HS, and I seem to be getting better averages as I run through this farm than I would normally get, especially when I go inside the house here. This game usually goes under 60 when I'm in this area under Windows, so it's pretty cool to see that we can beat it by a wide margin here. The game is a little misleading because it seems like it wouldn't be that demanding, but it's very demanding with all of the different lighting effects that you have on here, especially when you're at medium settings. As promised, here's Spider-Man Remastered again at 1080p low settings. We're starting out at the same area, but the route is slightly different. The performance of this game is hard to judge, especially since we don't have that GPU overclock. I would say that these are almost the same, which makes sense because this game is pretty optimized at this point. Forget, forget, I just, I'll be there soon. This tardiness is starting to become a pattern. Come on, Parker, you're better than this. He's right. How did I lose track of time? 
let's keep things going. Here's Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p using the lowest settings with no FSR. I benchmarked this game on the 7840HS at a very high TDP. We're not at a high TDP right now, and our average FPS is about 10 to 15 lower than it would be under Windows with the 7840HS. It's still really playable here, but it's not as good as it was or would be under Windows, especially since I can crank up the TDP much higher than this. This is another big game that I wanted to test out here under Linux. Here's Elden Ring at 1080p, low settings. This one is performing very well under Chimera OS. I really wanted to see if Final Fantasy XV could run better under this OS, so I added it to this video and I have it running at 1080p using the low preset. We're getting great performance with this title, but we don't quite hit 60 in any areas that I was playing in. This one was kind of surprising. Here's Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p using the lowest settings. This game seems to be around 10 FPS lower than it would be under Windows. Again, it's kind of hard to say because our TDP is not nearly maxed out at this point, but we might be able to improve things when we get those custom controls later on. No Man's Sky is a game that I haven't tested in a while and I was surprised to see how well it ran at 1080p using the enhanced preset. We do have dips down from 60 FPS using these settings, but the system wasn't stressed enough when I just used the low settings, so I bumped it up to the next highest setting. Sekiro is a pretty optimized game, so I wasn't expecting to see any surprises with it running under Linux. At 1080p, using the low preset, we don't quite hit 60, but we're not that far off. More than anything else, I was looking forward to testing Shadow of the Tomb Raider under Chimera OS, but for some reason, my save files would not sync after syncing them with Steam. My only option was to create a new game, so I opted instead to run the benchmark. If you have any idea why this is, feel free to let me know down below. At 1080p using the lowest preset, I got an average FPS of 69, which is very good for this game. Our last game for this big Linux showcase is Witcher 3. At 1080p using the lowest settings possible with no FSR, we get between 40 and 50 FPS, which is pretty good for this title at this resolution. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up things on this UM790 Pro video. It's a cool mini PC with good enough cooling to handle a high GPU overclock and a higher custom TDP limit of around 80 to 90 watts. Having two SSD slots makes this a decent option for dual booting Windows and Steam, and it's nice to see how well Chimera OS runs on this hardware. I'll have links to this guy down in the description box below if you wanna check it out. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see another, take a look at my video on the ROG Ally with the RTX 4090. Happy gaming, everyone. Talk to you out.